Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. But other than these basic characteristics, there are some specific things which are true only for earthworm because it is not that everything that falls under amulets are exactly the same because there are many worms which are segmented and which are coelomate, which are triploblastic and whatever characteristics I mentioned in the previous slide. But still they are very much different from each other because there are certain things which are very specific to each organism. So keeping that in mind, we will now start talking about the morphology of earthworm. So when I say morphology, we are going to talk about the external features or the external appearance, the external structure. So anything that is visible externally will come under morphology. So in morphology, we will first talk about the shape and segmentation of earthworm. How, do, how does it look like and how is the segmentation? So let, let us look at the shape of earthworm. It has a long cylindrical body, which is very, very obvious and evident. Pointed anterior end and blunt posterior end. So if you look at the front end, that is the anterior end. So the front end is pointed, quite pointed, whereas when compared to the back end, which is blunt. So that's all about the shape of the earthworm. Now talking about the segmentation, as I mentioned before also, the body is divided into almost 100 to 115 segments. So can you imagine that the entire body is divided into small segments like this. So each of these segments are also known as metamers. So they are also called metamers. Important organs are located in specific segments. Now what is the usefulness of these segments? We, you can actually locate which organ is located where. For example, suppose if I say where is intestine. So you can say that okay, it is located around so and so segments. We, if you talk about the male, male uh, genital pore or the female genital pore or the mouth. So you can locate each and every organ with the help of the segment number. Now, these segments are used to contract or relax independently to cause the body lengthen in one area or contract in other areas. So, segmentation basically provides flexibility and also strength in movement. So, it is because of the presence of these segments that the earthworm is able to move. Now, let us look at the dorsal and ventral view of earthworm. How does it look dorsal? When I say dorsal, I mean towards the back. When I say ventral, I mean towards the belly, right? So now when an earthworm is moving on the ground, which will be the dorsal side, the surface which is towards the sky, the above surface, the back surface, that is dorsal. Ventral is that surface of the body which is towards the ground, correct? So that is dorsal and this is ventral. So in a dorsal view of an earthworm, how will it look like dorsally? How do you know which is the dorsal side and which is the ventral side? So dorsal part is seen with a long dorsal blood vessel along the longitudinal axis of the body. So this is a very prominent thing to be noted. Dorsal blood vessel which runs throughout the length of the body. So you can see here, this structure which you see is nothing but the dorsal blood vessel. So if you are able to see that dorsal blood vessel, that means that is the dorsal side of the Earthworm. Whereas what is there on the ventral side that is towards the belly, ventral view is distinguished with genital pores. So the male and female genital pores which are used for, I mean they are, they are small opening through which the male and female sex cells are exchanged. So the, these basically help in the process of reproduction. So on the ventral side you can see those pores. So they look somewhat like this. So these pores indicate the ventral side of the earthworm. So whenever you want to distinguish which is the dorsal side and which is the ventral side, look for the genital pores. That will be the ventral side. Look for the dorsal blood vessel. That would be the dorsal side.
We will now talk about the external apertures. There are quite a few external apertures present on the body of the earthworm. Now one example I just now gave was the genital pores. They are also external apertures. External apertures are nothing but external opening. There are some pores which are present on the body of the earthworm which directly opens to the outside. So one such external aperture is mouth. And mouth has a covering which is called prostomium at the anterior end. So this is how it looks like. See, these are all segments. This is one segment. This is another segment. This is also one segment. So mouth is a part of the first segment. And mouth has a covering, a lead-like structure. You see here, this lead-like structure is known as prostomium. So what is prostomium? It is nothing but a covering of the mouth. So whenever they want to open the mouth, the lid will open. When you want to close it, it will close. And also this prostomium has another advantage. It is used to burrow in the soil. Because see, if you look at its shape, it is like a sharp knife. So with this, it becomes easier for the earthworm to dig in the soil. As I said, they live on, soil, on the upper layers of soil. So they need to burrow inside the soil and then be there. So it also helps in that. So mouth is a part of the first segment. So this first segment of earthworm, this is the first segment, this is the second segment, this is the third segment, right? So this first segment is known as peristomium. Now many people get confused with prostomium and peristomium. So peristomium is the first segment, entire first segment. And prostomium is located in the first segment but it is just the covering, lead like covering of the mouth. Right? Please remember the difference between the two. Other than mouth, they also have spermatrical apertures. So where are they located? So, there are four pairs of spermatical apertures located on the ventrolateral side. That means it is located towards the belly side but sideways. So there are four pairs of spermatical apertures. Where are they located? They are located on fifth to ninth segment. So this is the advantage of segmentation. You get to know where exactly the organs are located. What is the function of spermatical aperture? They receive and store spermatozoa. Now for the process of reproduction to take place, you need the sperm, that is the male sex cell, and you need the female sex cell. Now in case of earthworm, what happens is one single earthworm can produce sperms as well as can produce egg. So both the female and the male is present in the same organism. So there are some apertures which are used to receive and store spermatozoa from another earthworm. When we discuss the process of reproduction, it will become more clear to you. So when they exchange sperms, two earthworms exchange sperms during reproduction or during mating. Right? So now you need some place where you can store that sperm. So for that you need some opening. So this aperture is used to receive sper spermatozoa and also to store them. And then the third one are the genital pores. Genital pores again, they have male genital pores and female genital pores. When you talk about female genital pore, it exists singly. It is present in the mid-ventral line of the 14th segment. So it doesn't occur in pairs. It occurs singly. So this is your female genital pore. Female genital pore. If you see it is a single pore. It is present along the mid-ventral line. So if this is the ventral part of the body, so at the mid-ventral line, exactly at the middle of the 14th segment. Now see, the numbering might be incorrect in these diagrams, but you should remember the correct one. Then the male genital pores, they exist in pairs. This is one important difference. Female genital pore is only one, but male genital pore exists in pairs. They are present on the ventrolateral sides of 18th segment. So around 18th segment, somewhere in this segment, you will have the male genital pores and they will exist in pairs. So the male genital pores are located little laterally, that is little sideways, whereas the female genital pore is located along the mid-ventral line. So these are some of the pores or external apertures which are present on the body of earthworm. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com 
to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.